Cannabis Capital, where we're going to be take, talking to some of the industry's most accomplished decision makers and finding out what's really going on in the cannabis industry. And today, we're fortunate to have Elliot Lewis from Catalyst, the CEO, uh, joining us today. Thanks so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, why don't you just go ahead and, and uh, I know that, um, you know, you, you're really a man of the community. And that's really that's what, what I try to be. Yes. What I, I really appreciate that and about you. And, uh, you know, it's it's not just something that that I see you talking about. It's see it's something that that we all see you really uh, doing. Um, and that that's something that we really respect. And like, for example, um, you know, you recently uh, came out in support of uh, a L.A. or sorry, a Long Beach City uh, tax increase on cannabis businesses that would affect you directly. Right. And, you know, me. Ideologically, I would you know never support a tax, but I really under saw you know your statement, and I understood where you're coming from, and that you know you saw your community asking for help, and you were willing to step up, and that's something that um, you know I really wanted to make sure I mention and say that I appreciate and, and thank you for for all you do for your community. I know that it's a big part of of what Catalyst does through Catalyst Cares. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about how you got started? in cannabis with, with, with Catalyst, how yeah. Catalyst came to be. Yeah, so, well, I mean, my very first uh, actually grow, I won't go into the a super long story, was in 1996. Uh, I was a student at UC Berkeley. They were like the first ones giving out the, uh, the medical cards and uh, I was able to get one and we had like a three lighter. Uh, we grew three pounds. We thought we were pretty cool. Uh, I think we smoked one, sold a couple. Um, so, you know, I had to, back then, you know, used to, take, you know, five, six bong rips a day, love weed. We'd always grow a little bit. Um, and then when I graduated, I got a little bit away from, from it. Uh, we started focusing on real estate. A few of my buddies, you know, they ultimately kept uh, on growing that were from Berkeley. So my initial entry was, you know, I was good at getting the properties. Then I got involved in some grows up north in Calaveras County, which we had a whole struggle up there where they banned it and unbanned it. Um, and then it came to Long Beach. And I'm kind of giving you the short version. So when it came to Long Beach, I was like, fuck this. This is my town. I'm going to figure out how to get one of these. Um, so we we ended up doing pretty well. We, we got six licenses. Um, and it kind of like my head exploded. And I was like, all right, let's 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 keep wow. doing this. So then we just been moving city by city. Uh, street fight. We have the five open stores. Uh, but what's really impressive is we have 18 in the pipe that we're building out. So we should be about 13, 14 at the, uh, by the, by year end. And, you know, by middle of next year, you know, we should wow. have a pretty, uh, good size footprint. So we're juggling a lot of balls and, you know, like I was telling you before we started, the game's still super early. So most of the territories, uh, yet to open and, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, really interested in continuing to try to expand the footprint. Congrats. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's so so is that statewide or are you yeah. focusing just on El like, yeah, Central? for now, just California. Okay. Maybe okay. one day we like dabbled a tiny bit in Missouri and Illinois a little bit, but at the end of the day, I think we just brought the model down to like, hey, we're strong in California. Let's just try to win California. We've moved a little bit north. We're primarily in Southern California and you know, we're just really focused on retail in California. And awesome. the next store to open up for you is so we have, South LA? Uh, it's gonna be close. I have, we have one downtown Pine, which has been a controversial issue. Uh, in fact, it's uh, going through a council vote on June 15th. And if we get that, then we should be a couple of weeks from, uh, from opening. It's basically built out. And then the South LA one is right behind that. Uh, should be about first part of July. Got one in Calexico in August. El Monte and Pomona should be in fall. I one out near Hemet, uh, one kind of near Indio in the unincorporated area. And then there's quite a few more LA, Stanton, Oxnard, I forget, that are all wow. in the process. It takes about a year and a half to get them open. So you got to yeah. keep getting them into the pipe and then, you know, pushing them forward. So. Wow. Awesome. That's 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 all you know. That's a lot on your plate, and I can't imagine juggling all those sort of different municipalities at the same time because it's uh, it's really complex. And I know you're also really involved in, in on the ground on that front as well, in trying to you know, like you said, we were talking about you know, 75, 80 percent at least of the municipalities in California don't allow right. cannabis retail. And you know, as that changes, one, it takes people like you on the ground, you know helping write the changes. Um, and I, I know you're, you're involved in the, the legislative initiatives. Um, what, what, the, what do you have to say about that process or, you know, what, um, what, what people are, what are people misunderstanding about the cannabis licensing process and 
the availability and, and kind of, I don't know, the politics of it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's an interesting game, you know, to touch on your community outreach, and, and we'll talk more about that. You know, when it comes to community outreach, we're all heart, we're all service. It's something that we sincerely uh, believe in. Um, you'll see me there every weekend, pretty much, uh, doing an event. You know, maybe I'll take a weekend off here and there. I think it's important, you know, to, to lead from the front. But when it comes to licensing, you know, it's a political knife fight. You know, we let our resume speak for itself. Our community outreach is sincere. You know, that's always part of the, uh, you know, presentation, just the way, you know, we're, we're good at operations. So the, the, the cities know that they're going to get their tax money. And there's always a little politics behind it. You know, there, unfortunately, there is a lot of corruption in the licensing game. Uh, we try to fight hard against that, uh, you know, just outright uh, duffel bagging it's out there um, you know hopefully it seems to be reciting a little bit but it's a thing uh, that happens and then it you know gets into more gray areas of cronyism and stuff uh, I, I suspect uh, I know personally I can't name the cities but we're going to be writing a lot of initiatives uh, over the next 12 to 18 months so there's the reactive game where like in Pomona they issued some licenses very proud mm -hmm. only one of two retailers uh, they one out there yeah. and uh, you know then the city does it and then you react we're getting more into is the proactive game where you know our team is putting together the language uh, we did that at el monte and ultimately we were successful in winning winning but we opened up the city so i think you'll see more of that and the politicians for some reason i don't know incompetence or they don't get it or they don't know what to quite do the majority of their citizens are for it and you get this loud minority that talks a lot but they're just extra loud all the polls we've taken and we've taken some recent polls the polling is crazy it's all up around 70% now. You're talking with undecided. So like 20% yes, or 70% yes, 21% no. Cities you wouldn't think of as like uber liberal or anything. Um, so they, it should be passed everywhere, but they can't quite get it together. They don't know how to do it. They're trying to figure out how to write their cousins, uncles, nephews, uh, brother in. So we'd, we'd like to see the uh, you know that kind of process continue. And when the majority of the citizens want it, we think that it should be legal, at least in those cities, which is the vast, vast majority, you know, 90 plus percent uh, of the city. So, you know, California has local control. So the cities ultimately get to decide if they're going to open it up or not, or what it is. Essentially, the state is just a rubber stamp. So I think it's a big misunderstanding that like, oh, California is legal. Now this thing's still the block by block street fight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, ironically, you know, when I was doing my real estate stuff, I wasn't really interested in local politics. Now I could pretty much size up, uh, you know, 50 municipalities off the top of my head, like, you know, if I don't know their name, I know which way they lean on cannabis, what seat, you know, we might want to flip, whether they're union friendly, uh, you know, what 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 they want to see in an ordinance. And uh, it's just interesting and mildly ironic that by selling cannabis, uh, I've become very political, uh, you know, just as a as part of it. Uh, and I've learned, unfortunately, that uh, uh, it's, you know, dancing on the heads of snakes, but uh, it's, it's part of the game. So. So do you think that's something that, you know, uh, any effort towards federal legalization would just further complicate like then adding you know like a federal layers in your local state and federal or do you think um you know this is something where that would kind of solve the issue um or, or do you think it just takes more direct action i, I think eventually it's going to get developed i mean it's like a self-interested thing i like the way it is because we're not a big well-funded company so we can go block by block. You know, you take the last four cities that opened up in South, Southern California, Oxnard, Pomona, El Monte, Stanton, we went four for four. We're the only group that did that. Very proud of it, kind of calling it the Grand Slam. Um, and that's about all we could do at one time. So if the whole thing opened up, we're not big enough to be everywhere. We're really tiny and nimble, but um, effective. The federal legalization question, I'm probably minority opinion. I, I, I would like to see them give it to the states, deschedule it, allow us to bank, get people out of prison, uh, anybody, it should be automatic. Like in California, and we've done all these expungement fairs as part of our community outreach, like you gotta come in, and there's a whole process, and our lawyers give their time free of charge, and it's really cool. We've knocked off felonies, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, it should happen automatically. And we'd like to see that happen. Full federal legalization scares me, because it's a double-edged sword. Uh, you might end up with you know, big tobacco or Amazon, always curious like oh you're letting your employees because jeff bezos came out in support of legalization uh so you know full federal legalization or like you know, descheduling would probably be the like that's going what i want schedule yeah. two would be like the worst right, right? so give like, it all to the pharmaceutical companies it, exactly <laughs> and then they'll take it over so you know i'm on the fence with it but i definitely would like to see them you know decriminalize it 
let the states decide and treat us like any other business. I don't want to bore you with tax code, but we're also subject to 280E tax code, yep. which is super... It basically, uh, so for people that don't know, 280E is the tax code provision that makes it so cannabis businesses can't take normal business deductions. So when you pay most of your employees for marketing or sales or all the things that they're doing for you, you get taxed on what you're paying them as well as having to pay them. So it's double taxation, really. Right. And then, you know, I did an interesting video this morning. So it's funny about you raised the thing of the pandemic because in the video, I was like, yo, y'all know I got chops on this because I came out during the pandemic. But so the pandemic happened. The city of Long Beach was short. Uh, we pay way, way too much fucking taxes. But the city of Long Beach was short. Uh, they had a budget shortfall and they were hoping for the cannabis businesses to step up. So I made a, got in a lot of trouble with the fellow retailers uh, for saying like, yeah, I'll support a half a percent, one percent if it's uh, if it's uh, just temporary. So today I actually came out. We cut the video yesterday. We did some research on the oil companies in front of, in front of the fucking oil islands out in Long Beach. These things have terrible environmental impact, climate change. So our research indicates that they pay sixty three cents a barrel, no matter what they sell the barrel for. So the oil companies, which will have a huge negative impact at Long Beach, are paying less than one percent of gross tax. It's fucking bullshit. Meanwhile, in the city of Long Beach, we're paying 8% municipal tax. Doesn't count sales tax. Doesn't count excise tax. So we're Doesn't count the double tax from 280E. And, or 280E. So my argument that I made today was if the city wanted to make more fucking money, it would be net, it would be positive, uh, 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 revenue positive for them, which, you know, they're not going to like just give up the tax money. So I came up and said, let's have the cannabis industry pay 3%. Let's have the fucking oil industry pay 3%. The uh, uh, the city would make more money when we did all the math on it, right? And that would be fair. And quite frankly, I don't think fucking cannabis companies are doing more negative impact to the environment than oil companies. They built four fucking, 70 years ago, four oil islands uh, in the city of Long Beach. And one eighth of cannabis that we have right here, this is taxed at about the same rate at 10 fucking barrels of oil in the city of Long Beach. So one eighth of an ounce of a fucking plant is taxed at the same rate of 10 barrels of oil. It's an absurdity. So while during the pandemic, we came out as a temporary favor of the tax, literally this morning, ironically, I started hitting it like, and I think with the, the city, what we need to do is do the research. We did a lot of research, even had a couple of the interns do the research, go through uh, all the different measures that passed. And they did pass a measure opening it from 15 to 30 and the revenue that they're making, uh, you know, don't want to get down the rabbit hole, but then you compare Apples to apples. It's easy to say, hey, lower our taxes, but they're going to be like, fuck you. You know, wh 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 where's the money going? So I, I think making the compar comparison to oil, first of all, it's big oil and nobody really likes them anyway. But secondly, just objectively, uh, they've set up four oil islands in Long Beach. They're paying super fucking low tax. And the city of Long Beach is actually sinking. Those things that people don't realize have like gone all the way. It's one of the biggest oil producing shelves in Long Beach. So we've been hitting that issue. I'm calling it the three for three uh, fair tax plan. Invented it this morning, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, 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 uh, we're, we're pushing on that issue. But you know, the federal legalization thing, not to get on a tangent, is uh, it's an interesting question. I put it on the be careful what you wish for, but like, come on, man, fuck you, let me bank. Should be putting people in jail for cannabis. And if they were put in jail, they should be let the fuck out. So I think there's a lot of things they can do that aren't full legalization. Full legalization would be great in so much as like, you know, all the big corporations don't just come over and, and you know, and, yeah. and, and kind of like take the, the fun mom and pa mm -hmm. issue out of the industry. So that's my kind of thought on the, the federal legalization. Okay. Cool. And I know that we had a very short conversation um, about, you know, giving back to the veterans and, you know, SB 34, which I think, you know, I, I see a lot of dispensaries not really doing it. Um, and SB 34, for the viewers who don't know, is the California, the recent California State Senate bill provision that allows uh, retailers and brands to donate uh, cannabis products to medical patients. And specifically, mm -hmm. there's been a, a recently a lot of veterans and veterans organizations that have been using this this provision specifically to to get access to, to medication. Yeah, so tell us, are you, are you something that So you... we do have a program that's coming online. Okay. Um, we're, we're very passionate about it. Um, you know, the vendors seem to be up for it, so I do think it's something that, uh, you know, once all the red tape is figured out, that will happen. It's just like a way of conducting business. Literally, someone called me the other day. They had a veteran, so quite often we can't give it away. Even though we paid the tax and the whole sale price, we'll sell stuff 
uh, for a dollar. I probably shouldn't say this on camera because I'm gonna get a hundred fucking DMs. But like if somebody, <laughs> if somebody DMs me and like says something nice or man, you guys are bringing the fire, fire prices, and I just really appreciate it. I just want you to know I have back pain. I'll be like, yo, give me your, text me your number. And then I'll usually, I should not say this. It's going to be a bad thing to say. And, I, and, and I'll text the manager with them on the, on the line. And I'll be like, yo, give this guy $100 worth of weed for a dollar. So I've probably done that 80, 100 times. If there's an unsatisfied customer, wow. as long as they didn't get mouthy with staff, like I probably got like 60, 70 DMs. There's like three where I called staff and they're like, you know, we called me a, you know, inappropriate thing that you shouldn't say to a, a, a woman. I'm like, ah, bro, I can't help you. You went too far. But if it's even the product wasn't right, something's off. I always make it a point to like text down to the shop myself and make sure the customer's happy. And if I'm busy during the day and I'm, you know, checking them at night while I'm sitting there a little bit high, I'll try to run through all my DMs and make sure that everybody is happy. And I've even been talking to Will here, who's off camera about like getting to be a larger job. And I like to do it myself, uh, but it's a big part of what we do. Same thing with the community outreach. Like, you know, you'll see me uh, at the events. I just like staying in, uh, you know, touch with the people. My joke is like, I'm only CEO because, you know, I was the first guy, <laughs> basically the first guy there. And I'm just a hustler that, uh, you know, kind of was trying to get some licenses and then just de facto uh, became the CEO. So I always laugh at the uh, the title itself, but I think it's super important. And like, sometimes you get crazy people on, that send you DMs that are just fucking nutso. But a lot of the feedback is actually really good. And you get on the ground feedback. And then when you call, there might've been a little thing or whatever. And, and it's like, the thing I preach the most, I don't want them just leaving feeling good. I want them skipping and smiling when they're on their way to the car because patient retention is like, you know, that's what we want to do. The second you walk into a catalyst, you find out about us. We have the best menu, the best prices, the best service. Why the fuck would you shop somewhere else? So that's kind of the uh, the model in a nutshell. And I love that you guys yeah. say we for the people. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you how that started. Yeah. So originally when we started, we didn't know how to <laughs> we didn't know how to run uh, uh, shots. <laughs> And uh, so we had uh, we had connected running our shops right, and uh, they we were just licensing the name. We always owned them, but we were, we were licensing the name. So we have a great relationship with them, love their flower. And at some point though, because we were undercutting prices and we litigate a lot, we don't win licenses on processes that aren't fair. So we, the vendors love us, uh, uh, the 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 customers love us, but generally our fellow retailers not super popular. You mentioned the uh, you know the the tax increase as well as our position on. Social equity has got us a lot of, uh, uh, you know, blowback. And probably the Lakers Clippers. Yeah, the, too. I told you, that's the, that was the most controversial thing. I, I put some controversial shit up. Like, tell Lakers fans to root for the Clippers. Come on, it's 50 years. Uh, no titles was like, they were not uh, having it. <laughs> that, that, that was like one of the more ironic. You should make it up to them by giving them like, you know, a percentage off for all the Laker fans. Well, if, 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 <laughs> for upsetting them. Steve Pinu, if the Lake, if the Clippers were able to make it, anybody that was wearing Lakers gear that came in and said, you know, congratulations to the Clippers, like in the back of my mind, I was going to give them like a massive discount just to oh, see if shit. I can make them uh, do it. But I like both teams for the record. Uh, I root for them both. And even if the Clippers were from like fucking New Jersey, I like an underdog. It's 50 yeah. years. They haven't won. Let them fucking... Uh, uh, you know, have Let something. Let them shine. Yeah. So that's Cinderella that, story. Yeah. That came to us and they're like, hey, dude, our primary business is like wholesale flour. Every time I walk in a room, they're like, fuck this motherfucker, Elliot, da 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 da, -da. <laughs> And he's like, you're kind of fucking up our shit. I'm like, yo, that's your baby. I've never wanted to mess with it. Uh, you know, we're, we, we kind of want to do our own thing, have our own identity. So Catalyst thing's only well, almost a year old. I think we launched it like July 22nd. And then, so their thing was designer weed. And when we were just redoing it, and they were like, hey, we got to take the designer weed thing down. What do we want to put in this place? And I was like, let's do weed for the people. And so then now weed for the people for me has taken on like a, a I don't want to be grandiose about it, but it's a little bit of a movement. So what it means to us is, you know, we pay our workers really well. We're, we're really proud of our, our the UFCW uh, relationship that we have. We have the best bargaining agreement that I'm aware of uh, that's in, in cannabis. We keep our corporate overhead low. You don't see motherfuckers flossing Lamborghinis and fancy watches mm -hmm. at our corporate office, right? Everybody's, uh, you know, we're trying to keep it as tight as we can. And I always say proportionally our corporate staff makes the sa same or as close to our, uh, our, our worker all the way down to the bud tender as anybody in the game. Then we're big on the social equity issue. Uh, we've been hitting that hard. We are the only retailer that's taken a clear, unequivocal position in Long Beach that says, yeah, add some more fucking brick and mortar stores, right? And that's been very controversial. So originally, you know, we said, let's add some more brick and mortar stores. 
We help some of the equity applicants navigate the politics in Long Beach. We want to win at their back to make sure that ultimately uh, the issue passed and it didn't get buried in uh, committees. So we'll see how the whole program plays out. We're still putting uh, input in. It's a very complicated, nuanced issue. I think sometimes people get hyper-focused on the uh, ownership. So job training, re-entry programs, expungement, and then community outreach is another huge uh, part of it. So we're really sincere in that. You know, we try to do it as much as we possibly can. And then when we hire people, I interview everybody. I just interviewed somebody uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. We're going from 150 to 400 workers. Wow. And then like regional managers, like, you're gonna interview them all? I'm like, fuck yeah, give me seven, eight in a day. I'll do them at night. I just want to kind of like preach that volunteerism culture. And I always say like, hey, I don't want all your weekends, but there's gonna be a time. We're gonna need some people and some bodies. I want to call on you. This is what we're all about. So I'll spend like seven minutes getting to know them and then about seven or eight minutes telling them what uh, Weed for the People is about. And then the final one is just fire weed at fire prices, right? And and we do that because we don't have any marketing budget. I mean, Will here that's, that's here taking cameras, he just started two weeks ago, right? Uh, so, you know, it's just me talking shit. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, from high school takes the photos. We don't have no fucking influencers, no Jay-Z, no Seth Rogen's. No Perkle or Urkel. We just take all that money and sell weed, uh, you know, for cheaper than the next guy and keep the menu really good. I don't think influencers work. Burner being the exception, he's the OG. He's got the fucking chops. I think, uh, you know, he... Well, he, he really built a brand. Right. Yeah. And he was early. But all these new guys coming in, I ain't fucking buying it. And, you know, and I've done a video on, you know, I, I like Jay-Z's music. Good artist, no disrespect. But he's selling a shit bag fucking pre-roll for $70. It tastes like shit. Like, why the fuck are people going to buy... A pre-roll because Jay-Z says it's good. So, well, they're or like sourcing. House plan with <laughs> yeah, they're, so, they're sourcing their flour. Well, like, of course, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's, and, you know, I mean. And so you can get it under a different brand for a better price. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, no. I'm, and it's it's crazy. Like, Seth Rogen got, you know, we're going to be very blunt right, right now, but got caught because he's using THC Designs flour. Yeah, I mean, they're all doing it. They're yeah. not touching the plant. And, like, we're trying to make a distinction, too. I know sometimes people get corporate, but I really like the owner's you know, they actually touch the plant and grow in some way. And then we have some owners that are doing the deliveries. And I think just having that love for it uh, and not just white labeling it uh, is, is an important part of the, uh, you know, the, the process. But, you know, I'm not like against influencers per, per se. I think it's kind of fucking stupid. Like the consumer's smart. They know what good cannabis is. And I'm not even like, I can, I'm not even a professional on like from nine to 10 grades, but our, our staff knows and, uh, you know, the consumer knows and they're going to eventually find it. So we find that word of mouth, like we ask them when they come in, it's all word of mouth. Maybe when we come out, we'll get a weed map tile or two. But other than that, we don't fuck with any of that. And because we run our, our really efficient and nobody takes, like, I don't take no fuck. I have health care. That's it. I don't take any money out of the company. Most of the main people are, are working for way less than they're worth uh, in order to try to build something that's bigger. And it's been, you know, a, a, a successful strategy. So far, I'm pretty sure we're dominating most of the Getting markets we're in. Yeah. Yeah. My joke is, like, you know, our store in Bellflower is like, you know, about a block and a half from Jay-Z. And I'm like, well, you know, you got me talking shit and they got Jay-Z. But <laughs> our menu's so much better. You know, we got, not that that has anything to do with it, but, you know, we're probably doubling or tripling their sales just mm -hmm. based on the menu. And I think that trend uh, ultimately will continue. We'll see. But like. Who the fuck cares if Mike Tyson, Cheech or Chong? I like Mike Tyson. I like all these guys. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that determines uh, what the consumer is ultimately going to buy. Now, if the guy shows up to the store, you might get a crowd for one day. But I don't think any of those are going to have, you know, staying powers. So. I mean, you had a really good example of Dan Bilzerian. Yeah. So, like, that's, the, I call it the Ignite phenomenon. Because, yeah. like, you can buy all the shelf space in the world, but if the bud tenders are turning people away from your brand... It's just DOA. Yeah. No. And so if the bud tenders know that like, oh, this is the same product as this other brand and it's just priced twice as high, they're not, like, it's not going to move. No, 100%. And I, I, like, I have 100 people always hit me up for the shelf space. And I'll have our team review it. I'll call them the cool kids. They know what's, uh, what stuff sells for. And I'll give them the honest, blunt uh, feedback <laughs> and be like, hey, man, this shit ain't going to sell. So, you know, and I always have, like, my mother's uncle's cousin wants to get on the shelf. And I'm yeah, like, oh. so what, what is your advice for brands trying to get placement in your store? It's got to be, it's got to be good, and we're, we're, and it's got to be well-priced. And our message is, hey, we're going to, we're going to make a small margin on it and pass it on. And, you know, sometimes I'll just play it out because it's somebody I know, and I've seen it a million times, like, oh, I'll put your shit on the shelf. And then it doesn't sell, then I say, like, yo, I told you, you got to, you know, and I leave the expertise, like I said, I'm not the, the pricing expert. I trust our team. And I said, I told you, she said, you know, put it up at 46, 
and you're up there at uh, you know 58. So, it, it, you know, I, I think that it is hard to get on shelves, um, but ultimately, I think your product, uh, you know, speaks volumes. So, to your point, to the bud tenders, they're the fucking front line of this shit. So, and they know they're fucking smoking that shit every day, all day. Yeah. They know the the product. So, if if you can't win over the bud tenders because your product's not good, they're 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 not gonna. It's, it's not going to sell. So you could put whoever you want on your shelf. You could get into every store. You could put whatever brand power or superstar behind it. Ultimately, cannabis, I think, is one of those products that people care about quality and uh, and price. And that's ultimately what's going to sell. Yeah, and the brand doesn't sell itself. Right. No, I, I, I 100% agree. And, like, I don't know why, like... Nothing on Urkel. I mean, I watched Family Matters and the one I was I did. Kid. I did. <laughs> okay, I'm going to admit, I did get... I did buy his his um, pen because I was really trying to give 710 a little bit of credit, right. you know, I mean, they're one of the top concentrate brands in California. And so I did meet him and I did get it, but I was very disappointed because I spent a hundred dollars on this pen and it was burnt. Yeah. And I'm not hating on any of these people personally, but it's like, because this guy had a star show, or he was a star of a show and whatever that was the late eighties, like, that vape pen's going to be better than guys that have been in the game forever. It just, it's actually absurd when you uh, think about it. Uh, you know, yeah. and then Cheech and Chong, what'd they do? They smoked a lot of fucking weed and made some cool weed movies. But they're nowhere. School. Yeah, they're nowhere. Yeah. So, I, and, yeah. you know, Tyson smokes a lot of weed. And he's nowhere. Yeah. And I've actually, like, flirted with the idea of, like, I love Mike Tyson. Like, guy's fucking great. It's like my hero. Fuck, I, man, I, you know, Mike Tyson's punch out on Nintendo. <laughs> finally was able to beat his ass. And I got it down where I can beat him without being punched. I love the fucking guy. But, like, why would you buy weed? Because Mike Tyson says it's good. He just used to kick people's asses and he smokes a shitload of weed. It doesn't know that mean he knows about He's not growing, growing it. it. Yeah. So it's Yeah, just, and I heard the other actually the other day um, that his ranch is like a facade. <laughs> that <laughs> so, I just, <laughs> it's just like you can go and, and just kind of see the ranch, but um, yeah, he, they actually I guess it's not it's not all the products are from No, from they the outsource the flour. Lot, all of it. I mean, I won't Everybody. put I won't put 100 bland brands on blast right I now. Know. But if you look closely, <laughs> A lot of them are are, are uh, doing that. And Mike Tyson, I fucking love you. Don't come kick my ass. You were my hero growing up. That 90 oh, second God. knockout of Sphinx. Fucking A, that was some real shit. But, uh, you know, I, I, it's just that why, why, why is he going to sell weed? Makes, makes no uh, logical sense at all. Well, if he wants to come and talk on the show, open invitation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I definitely like if he wanted to come to my shop and have a PAD, I'd be like, fuck yeah. But like, you know they're trying to sustain a brand and sell it. Like, is it really gonna? Uh, is it really gonna work? So, and, and like I said, in cannabis, I find the consumers uh, to be super smart. You know, compared to wine, you don't mm. really see wine influencers. You know, you see some in alcohol, but not wine, where people are have a finer palate and they really want to uh, do something uh, that they like <laughs> and that they could get at a you know a decent price. So. Yeah. And shout out to Clay Nine. Yeah, Clay Nine. Really. Yeah. This is the Diamond Dust. This is really, really good. Probably great. my best. One of, one of my favorite. Yeah. Shows. I'm jumping in on the QA, but I'll be, I'll be going sideways. We get, yeah. I'm a nighttime guy. But. Well, and, the, and the smoke is coming in your face. That's you might get a little bit of a lie. It doesn't count. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Let's put this right here. Nice, Ian. That was no that was, that was no small rip there, Ian. You're a fucking <laughs> professional. I gotta Thank say that. Yeah. We'll put this back. I've been yeah. exercising. I'm like one yeah, or two here. bong rips a night and then I'm fucking in no man's land. So you probably have never done any dabs? No. Well, oh my gosh. That's, I did one time. It was a little too much for me. But uh, Were you hallucinating? Yeah, it was just like too much. I was in Vegas. Some of the younger guys got me to do it. And then I was like, whoa. And it looks, yeah, whatever you want to do is fine. I'm not against it. But like they gave me a torch and I was like, you know, this is cannabis <laughs> consumption, but it's cool. We have some dabbers. Uh, you know, we had a smoke sedge, and they're like their own uh, kind of clique of people, and they swear by the it. Denzel tool, the Denzel tools, the Yeah, <laughs> and look, my, my yeah. whole thing is like, I love that. You know, especially yeah. with cannabis or any other medicine, um, you know, who are we to say how it affects people individually? Mm -hmm. And our policy is pretty basic. You know, in theory, we have a policy that says don't come to work high. Our unofficial policy is like handle your shit, right? And we have people at you know the top of our HQ. Uh, I don't ask because it's probably something I don't want to know, but I'm pretty sure if I went around, I could, you know, name a handful, uh, the majority that that's like their cup of espresso in the morning, or instead of taking an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety, uh, they smoke cannabis. And if that helps them work 
and they're effective at their job, I'm, you know, totally fine with it. Our rules, you know, just handle your shit. And I won't go job by job because people will start figuring out uh, who I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, very important people in our organization uh, are, are, are regular smokers. For me personally, during the day, uh, just throws me off a little bit. Like at night, I could smoke, relax, just my wife and I. And then I could get silly, do dumb shit. So uh, what do you do, bong rips? Yeah, bong rips mostly, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Have you tried the Moda? You haven't. No. Nah. We got the Moda loaded up. I know, up I can't wait. That's the Aqua one. Yeah. For him. <laughs> my wife has like that same version that's pink. And then we had like a smoke out. So I'm going to totally tell on myself. And I was smoking out of that. And then I was like, uh, dude, I looks like I got to get something better. So I did recently uh, get something better. I'm like, I got a reputation to uphold here. I'm smoking out of a little baby uh, ping pong. And then my joke's been, I'm exercising. Uh, you know, I'm smoking and smoking more and more and more and more. So I'll be able to like... Uh, build my tolerance back yeah. to what it used to be when I was uh, younger. But I'm I'm pretty lightweight. Like once I get to two bong rips a night, I'm like, Are right, you smoking your flower or are you smoking other brands? I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give a shout out <laughs> right now to uh, KRD at Fresh Baked. Uh, and, uh, no, and uh, uh, you know another guy who I I, I did a lot of stuff with uh, in Calaveras County back in the day. Magic Show. Uh, I like to smoke on that. Wonder Brett. Uh, there's a lot of really good brands. I know uh, some people are into these really high uh, testers sometimes, which is like another little topic. Like, what the fuck is the arms race with the testing? Like, yeah. you know, when you walk into a to buy liquor, you don't say like, I want the fucking Everclear, not the vodka. Or I'm going to pay more a... for the 151 than for the, <laughs> yeah. you know, the yeah, like scotch. I said, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm far from a fucking, yeah, or the Bacardi. Bac Bac What's that? The ass whipping, yeah, yeah, with Bacardi. Like, no, I'd rather have a nice glass of uh Whiskey, if it's your thing, again, I don't judge uh, what people do. But just logically, I'm not an expert by any means on the product. You know, I know what we can we sell a lot of, and, you know, I, I, I dabble a little bit. Uh, so I don't want to, like, pontificate as an expert. But just logically, if you're breeding only for THC, you seem to be killing other parts of the plant off and making them less important that are important. So certain, you know, strains of cannabis that I smoke that might be a tiny bit lower in THC, you know, whether it be the terpenes or the cannabinoids or whatever else the science is behind it, the way that it hits my body is more relaxing and more enjoyable versus the THC. And then, like, where the fuck does it end? So, like, now they got <laughs> testers in the high 30s. What are we going to 50? And that's going to be, like, how we determine what the best flower is. And, yes, they got ones that test high. They usually grow uh, fire. But, you know, I'd like to see some of this arms race of testing just go away right i think a lot of it is just like that seems to be kind of the first layer of quantification right it's the only thing we can really like put a number on and compare a to b you know and they're starting to do more with like terpene levels and i think that that'll get there but as far as you know kind of trying to indicate the level of experience like how do you how do you measure it right you know? <laughs> three three plus marks you know <laughs> and like because i'm a lightweight and cannabis does affect me a lot uh and i enjoy it and i have a lot of creative thoughts like i always say like man i'll come up with like 10 ideas a night a lot of content ideas and then the next day i'll wake up i'll be like two of those are dumb but those other eight are fucking good <laughs> go go research the oil and fucking uh i'll be coming in the morning yo yeah. let's figure out how much they pay per barrel this is you know so it, it really is a creative uh tool but the super high testers like just throw me a little bit uh you know, off there, but I just think as a general thing, kind of to look at it logically, it was never intended to be, you know, rejuvenated that way. I yeah. mean, let's say we took one quality of any human or any animal yeah. and was like, all right, we're only going to select out the tallest because whatever, then, you know, you would lose the mm -hmm. quality of the, you know, the entire human. So it's an interesting question. I agree. That is like something that quantifies like, oh, you did a good job, but I definitely don't think it's yeah. the only metric. And when you're buying wine, like people aren't like making their decisions you know, based on, is this a 9% or is this 12%? Yeah. You're not even fucking looking. You might not even look until you get home. Or if you got a bottle of wine at a restaurant, you might not even ever have known what percent it tested at. Mm -hmm. But when the guy brings it, you know, you take a little, you know, taste and you're like, oh yeah, that's good. You don't ask him like, hey, what's the fucking uh, alcohol <laughs> level on that wine? But for some reason, <laughs> cannabis has uh, kind of gone down that road. So There's a lot of education that needs to be done. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't know about the terpenes and the, you know, it's just, it, this whole percentage is pretty new. Yeah. Yeah. But it's definitely becoming a, a thing. Yeah. And look, they hit a good percentage. I'm not knocking it too. I want to be clear. Like, it's not me putting it down. I just think it's 
uh, a question that we should be asking ourselves mm -hmm. if that's the end all be all. And at the end of it, you're going to have some strain that's 53% THC, but like, <laughs> is that what really what we're trying to do here? Because I, you know, not that long ago, like high 20s, low 30s, now they're getting into the high 30s. So we're the, and like each generation in theory should get a little higher. So where the fuck is it going to, you know, end? So that's just an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon it's just going to be ready made distal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's go fucking dab. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know, I know that uh, some some brands are getting heat right now for their positions on on things like grow your own. Um, and I know that the celebrities aren't growing their own, right? They're outsourcing. But I wanted to hear what your thoughts were or, or position on, you know, do you think that should be something that, you know, it's just universally, I, like, I think that should just universally protected. Like, if it's going to be illegal, you should be able to grow your own. But... Uh, what do you mean, at-home grows? Yeah. Or, yeah. like... Oh, yeah, for sure. And I don't even hate on the illicit market. Honestly, it's the fucking high taxes that makes the illicit market. Uh, I'm getting better with my words, by the way. I used to call it something else. But uh, <laughs> uh, and I, did, I don't mean anything bad by it. But, uh, I'm a CEO now. So uh, or traditional. I like traditional better. Illicit sounds like I won't say, but it sounds like something else. Uh, I think traditional. I'm not, I don't even hate on the traditional market. Like uh, people growing in their own yard. They want to grow six plants. I know a few people do it. I think it's fucking great doesn't take out of our pocket. They're going to take a whole fucking year to harvest them. And then, you know, the traditional market itself, I don't hate on it. I don't love it. But all they're trying to do is feed their families. And, you know, they've had different barriers of entry that they haven't been able to get legal. And that's their hustle. They're just putting bread on the table. They're creating jobs, too. Um, you know, I think there's some safety concerns and all that. Um, but I'm definitely not one of those guys, um, you know, because there were some moments when we started, like, is this shit legal or is it not legal? Like, I got a fucking whole notebook full of uh, cards do think, here. Right? Do you think the holes in the the legal system are kind of like what's keeping you know prices high and think, and uh, inaccessible to patients? And I think at least in, that's been my observation. Well, it's that, fucking ridiculous. The taxes and the regulation and the red tape are fucking ridiculous. Now I agree with the testings, and I'm not an expert on this, but I've talked to some labs. They're like, this is fucking over the top testing, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the interesting thing is, that without getting into like what's the you know effects. Uh, you know, psychologically on cannabis, it's the fucking safest thing you'll ever in ingest. It's safer than your food, your grapes, your fucking water, like almost anything, your meat, anything that you would eat or ingest wouldn't pass uh, cannabis mm -hmm. testing. So I think, look, we want it to be safe, but like there's these random tiny little one in a billion microbes, like if you, and I don't know the levels, but like if you had one in a billion and it was supposed to be one in two billion, like, I think I'll fucking live. It's called an immune system, right? <laughs> um, and then, you know, I think on top of that, the compliance is so hard. And then we've been lucky because in 16, it kind of built up. But if you wanted to start now, it's almost impossible. And then the big thing is, you know, look, we have union jobs. We're really proud of that, but that's an extra cost. And then the excise tax, 20% of wholesale, we're paying 10 and three quarters. Blah, blah, blah. By the time you go through the whole plant, it's 40% tax. And we don't pay that, right? The consumer pays that. So, you know, my big push now is, why are you fucking taxing cannabis different than other industries? Uh, you know, and, 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 you know, people are like, well, what about tobacco? Yeah, they fucking create a burden for the health system, and there might be some logic behind that. But, you know, again, going back to the video we cut this morning, like, big oil, y'all fucking up Long Beach way more than cannabis, and you're paying less tax than we are. It doesn't make any sense, right? And when an eighth of cannabis is being taxed, I'm talking by dollar, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. top shelf eighth, let's say it's... 60 bucks, 8% municipal tax on that. It's like five bucks. It's like 10 damn near, you know, almost works out. Depending on the 70, it works a little better, but right? Basically one eighth of top shelf cannabis is 10 barrels of oil wow. are being taxed at the same rate in the city of Long Beach. And that's just the municipal tax. Doesn't count the fucking sales tax. Doesn't count the excise tax. When you get into that, it's crazy. So we did our own calculation based on what the city is getting from the oil companies. If you didn't just count the municipal tax, you threw it all in, Little old fucking catalyst pays more taxes than the entire oil industry just within city limits, not our stores outside, within the city limits of Long Beach. That's a fucking absurdity. So that's creating the traditional market to continue to thrive because, uh, you know, they have a 30% tariff that's protecting them. And I'm not one of these people that think it's going to go any way, away anytime soon. The best way, I think, is by bringing down the tax rate, lowering barriers of entry, doing social equity programs that actually work. And then getting uh, the traditional people to transition over 
and have a, a, a way to make revenue. Because we don't want to take revenue out of people's hand and fuck, you know, uh, the war on drugs 2.0, right? Yep. So obviously there has to be some disincentive and, you know, maybe fines is the answer, but we don't want fucking people getting arrested for cannabis either. So I don't hate on people for hustling. Like, they're just trying to put bread on their table. And, you know, uh, you know I'm not the guy that's like, oh, fucking traditional markets beating us to death. It's like, yo, up your game then. There's a big enough, uh, you know, legal market, you know, that, 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 you know, we can, we can survive. Obviously, California, because of its history, the traditional market is going to be here. Very well established. And they're the yeah. smartest, most clever, cunning fucking people on this planet. So the thought that somehow you were just going to legalize it and then they were going to quietly go be like, oh, I'm going to find a whole new way to feed my family when I'm clever as fuck and I've been doing this for 15 years was never going to happen. The only way you're going to transition it is if they can get into the legal market and the barriers of entry in the legal market have become so fucking obtuse and so over the taxes that it's really driving the, the policy. It's the legalization policy itself is ironically driving, you know, the traditional market. Absolutely. So, you know, in recently Harborside acquired Sublime, Spark acquired Basito. And so we're seeing these retailers acquiring different verticals and you guys are doubling down on retail. My theory is this, the footprint at the end is going to be uh, your strength, right? So, um, and you know, it wasn't our core competency. We ended up selling a couple grows we had in Calaveras. Uh, we actually had a grow in YOLO that we owned 50-50 with Connected. We uh, traded that for some stock in Connected. You guys are the fucking after, a- experts, you do it. We actually own like, I don't know, one and a half, two percent or so of uh, Connected from some of our grows. And we just focused on uh, you know, retail. So, you know, everybody gets into this vertical integration thing. You know, I, I like the idea of being collaborative, finding some brands that you like and, and running with them. We do make our own vape cartridge. Uh, I should say we make it. Somebody makes it for us. <laughs> uh, and it's meant to be an affordable brand. We're actually going to up another one that's uh, live resin. I was like, well, let's do a premier one. And one of the guys is like, that's live resin. I'm like, whatever it's called, let's do that, right? Because <laughs> on some of these like idiosyncrasies, when they start getting into the butter and the batter and the yeah. that, I'm like, all right, dude, just, yeah. I, I just, Figure you know, it out. On, a, on a spreadsheet, I'm like, all right, that shit's concentrate. You know, because <laughs> when I was growing up smoking a lot of weed, there was just like swag and chronic or like bomb. There wasn't like, yeah. you know, yeah. so I had to like re-learn uh, it all. But, um, <laughs> you know, the the I, I think at this point, you know, we don't need to be vertically integrated. I personally think there's an oversupply of flour on its way. It just hasn't been here yet for two major reasons. One, the fucking red tape is a lot. It's taking people to get open. But the bigger one, too, right now in California, six times more legal cannabis is being grown than consumed. So it's fucking falling off the trucks. And as companies consolidate and they need to put numbers on their balance sheet, they're not going to be able to throw shit off the truck. Uh, You know, throw it off the truck. So I actually think that uh, there is going to be an oversupply. The retailers will be well positioned. Also, is New York and New Jersey and, you know, maybe Georgia or even Florida. I get some better weed or goes wreck. You know, that's where the weed gets shipped. It gets shipped from California illegally. So when the cost of, like, shipping to New York doesn't outweigh, well, I could just grow the shit here, a lot of those markets will shut down and there'll be less incentive uh, for the traditional market. So I'm one of those guys that's like, dude, just let, leave the traditional market be for the most part. Yeah, if they're flaunting it and they're obvious, but it really scales of economy and, you know, barriers of entry would uh, eliminate it. But I've kind of come to the point in life, like, just stick what you're good at. And we're, we're good at uh, retail. We're good at the ops side now. And, and uh, you know, when we started, we were good at getting licenses. We've gotten really, really good at the, uh, the ops side. I think our message, or whatever you want to call it, is, is resonating. So we're just sticking with that. And then, you know, who knows, maybe down the line, uh, if we like some brands and there's some, something to talk about, you know, yeah, it'd be, <laughs> it, we, we would be, uh, you know, open to it. And you guys are raising money to right now as well, right? Well, we hit a little, so we did hit a little lick. Uh, pretty proud of that. Um, you know, so since we've got here, we never had fucking money. We bootstrapped it. We, we sold off a couple of licenses that we won so we could survive. It's been all mom and pop money. I got 60 motherfuckers on my cap table. I say that in a good way. I love all you guys. <laughs> uh, just like, you know, yeah. primarily friends, a guy who knew a guy. So, you know, our, our mean investor was like 100, 200 grand. And we never had enough money to finish the next build out. And we were just barely fucking getting by. Meanwhile, we were stacking all these licenses. So fairly recently, uh, Canadian hedge fund looked at us and they're like, we think you have the best model in California. 
And I'm like, fucking A right. I've been saying that since 2017, <laughs> right? And uh, so we did get some funding, not a lot by uh, uh, terms of these bigger MSOs, but for us, pretty good fucking pile of money. Uh, but when you put it 18 dispensaries, you realize like, well, I don't quite have enough to get all the way through it. Um, but it's the first time ever, you know, I called the contractor. I'm like, go motherfucker, pedal to the metal, let's go. Cause it's always been like Sophie's choice. We think this one's gonna make the net most money. We'll build this one. We'll try to keep all these held. Oh shit, is this guy gonna put in the money? And I've been walking this tightrope yeah. literally day to day. Like our expenses are, you know, for the month are five times more than our daily bounce. Like apparently, uh, you know, I wake up, I don't, I am think I'm sleeping. I had like, you know, <laughs> some night terror shit going on. Uh, just trying to, you know, keep our head above water. So getting this money, uh, although not a lot, has been fun and it's validating that like, oh, okay, I'm not totally fucking crazy because I actually do think we have the best model. Mild brag. It's huge yeah. 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 And then I, I think our advantage actually now has been that we figured out how to do it without the money. So we go into a city, we risk hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars and we win, we win something for multiple millions. So we've definitely won. We don't have more open, but we've definitely won and won at a higher percentage in a competitive uh, licensing application than anybody in California that breathes earth today, right? Or breathe, breathes air on earth today. <laughs> What happened with the trust fund babies, I won't like put people on blast, but like Medman, genius. <laughs> but they uh, you know, they came out and they just bought the shit, right? So mm -hmm. like your money goes fast when you're paying seven, 10, eight, four, five million bucks. So we were we had to develop a really, you know, hard, gritty mentality, and we fight really tough for these things, very thorough, uh, good at you know, strategic and understanding how the licensing application works. And so now that we got a little bit of money, I think developing that way organically. I mean, it's nice that we finally got the fucking money. It's awesome. been good. So we developed this skill set because we were, you know, broke as fuck and barely getting by. And we had kind of an idea. And, you know, finally somebody looked at it uh, and they loved it. They were like, and they you guys invest a lot of fucking different uh, cannabis companies. So I think if we execute over the next six to 12 months, there might be, uh, you know, a little bit more money there. And it's just relaxing to like, you know, have payroll and That's all these, great. you know, all these things. So we, we are profitable off the stores that we have open. Uh, and you know, we do pretty good. We have a low overhead, but you know, we got a ton of unfunded liabilities behind us stuff. We've already won that we're trying to build. So now that we got the money, I think, you know, we're, uh, again, you know, I don't want to knock on wood, but I think by the end of this year, going into summer, people are going to be like, where the fuck did these guys come from? Cause we started a decade behind everybody. Uh, our model was crazy. Uh, you know, when they, when they invent, when they come in, I'm like, no, no, no. We support diluting the license pool with social equity. We pay our workers really good. We don't market to fucking anybody. We spend all our money in community outreach. So we have our community outreach people, departments, five guys. We really have no money in the marketing department. Will is here. He's two weeks old at our, <laughs> at our company. But uh, other than that, there's really no like uh, marketing. And they're like, this is the dumbest idea ever. But now they see that we have a little track record. Holy fucking shit. Your stores are actually all profitable. You guys are running a profit and then, you know, your capital expenditures make it so that, you know, you're running out of money. So they came in and, and understood it. But I pitched this fucking thing to these bankers, uh, you know, a lot of times. And I was able to always get the mom pa guy just from my experience of like having guys that have been investing with me for 10 or 12 years and being pretty good at making money in real estate too, but never been able to land a hedge fund. And all I do when I show up to these meetings, I just turn my hat around. That's my like, only sign of respect. <laughs> Somebody asked me like, what are you wearing at the mayor's event? We, we had an event with the mayor. They're like, you know, how you dress? And I'm like, I just turn my fucking hat around, man. That's it. Like, this is like my daily uh, get up. So, you know, I toned it down a little bit, said a few less bucks, but basically pitched the same model. Because at the end of the day, if they don't believe in the model, like, you know, I don't want to say really, like that. It's a I waste their, of time. Yeah, I don't want their fucking yeah. money anyway, right? So there, we do have, you know, again, compared to the That's, big boys. You know, it's huge val validation. And I know we've got some some questions on the yeah. Q&A. We're going to... Sorry, I'll fucking keep going. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, hour. That's easy. <laughs> on the iPad. Oh, yeah. Dang. I want some hard ones. I hope they got some fucking <laughs> real hitters. Here we go. We got, um, what inspires you about the cannabis industry? Well, yeah, no doubt for me, uh, is, is the community outreach part of it. You know, that, that's what really makes me feel good. Little history, uh, you know, 15 years ago, I got off hard drugs, uh, was in a 12 step program for a while. And at that moment, you know, I don't try to define it. I'm kind of getting deep here, uh, and figure out what it is, but I came to believe in a power grader myself. I don't know what that is. And, you know, I don't go for sainthood and I take no fucking vow of poverty, but we try to do the right thing. So the service is what really drives me. and makes me feel good. So through this program, 12 step program, I don't think I'm supposed to actually say the name on camera, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, you know, I, I, I found a kind of a life of service and realigned my thinking and that's guided me 
uh, till the day. Now, don't get it wrong. Like, I oh, we're fucking in a you know license fight. Like, I got brass knuckles on. We trying to we trying to win. But that's really a big passion. And then, if I'm being totally honest, I like the fucking game. Like, you know, it's fun. I love building something great. Never really been the money that drives me. Like, I don't give a fuck what the valuation of our company is. I probably wouldn't buy a new truck. I probably wouldn't get a new house. Like, I'm not gonna change the way I am. So I would say the two things, you know, first the community outreach, and the second is the game. I don't have no fucking hobbies. My family, I got a wife, four kids, I spend my time with them. That's my hobby, my job is my hobby. I don't consider this work. It's the fucking funnest thing you'd ever wanna do on the history of the fucking planet in any other <laughs> era. So like, and it's the wild west still. Yeah. So I just love what's going on. We're changing policy, who knows where it will go, but you know, we're making a little bit of California cannabis history, hopefully in the process. Building, building an industry yeah. from scratch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it's still early, like I said, second, third inning at the latest. You asked him what inspires you? Yeah. Oh, okay. And what gave you the confidence to make it this far in the industry? Because, <laughs> yeah, talking about you know, getting the buy-in, right? Yeah. From, uh, from not only your team, not only the investors, which mm -hmm. sounds like it took a long time. But, yeah, I mean, you had to... Yeah, my advice, confidence. like, I guess, I, you know... I have a lot of fuck ups along the way too. So, uh, you know, it, it's my strong suit. It Maybe it's a weakness too, but action to me is the thing that uh, uh, is the most important. So, you know, I've had, I've taken beats, you know, we tried a passion initiative in Compton. We got the shit kicked out of us. I lost a lot of money doing that, but I learned from it. Um, you know, I just, I, I don't know if it's confidence or what it is, but I just, the way I've always been, I just fucking go for it. And, you know, I think especially if you're younger, uh, you know, take some beats. You know, I went during the, when the real estate went down in like 2007, I went bankrupt. All my fucking properties got foreclosed. So I had to come back from that. Um, so it's just learning. And now I think I'm finally, I'm barely fucking mature enough to be at this spot in my life where I'm 43 and I'm like, okay, I can handle this and, and run a company. But, you know, I think the other thing that's made me more confident is now I'm not afraid to be like, I don't know shit about that. Let me get the guy that knows something about that. So I know what I'm good at. I try to stay in that lane, and then if I'm not good at it, uh, you know, I, I, I try to delegate it uh, out. But really, I just love what I do. So I wake up in the morning, I'm driven by it, and don't put a ton of thoughts. It's an interesting question into the confidence aspect of it. But I guess, uh, you know, I had an old baseball coach that said, like, how do you get success? Confidence. How do you get confidence? Success. How do you, you know, and I think that's some of it. Then it starts to go, and you think, like, holy fucking shit, you know, I'm pushing this boulder up a hill. But it's really just a drive to do it. And again, I think not being led by the money puts your mind in the in, in the right place. And I don't say that in a way like I don't like to make a little money, but that's not the, the driving factor. Right. You're trying to build something. Yeah. And then, you know, like the outreach out. we're doing is no fucking joke. Like, I mean, we did like 14 uh, food drives, toy drives. Mm -hmm. uh, we just, you know, painted some basketball courts for music changing lives. We have some groups in Oxnard we're supporting, some really cool groups in Fresno that are getting gangs off the street. Uh, we got a job fair tomorrow in South Central LA. We already did an expungement clinic there. We just did one with the UFCW. So that work is, wow. and we probably have 10 or 15 groups that we're regularly giving money to. When I get the checks at the end of the month, I'll send staff an email sometimes and just says, thank you. Y'all guys just made a lot less, but this is who we gave the money to. And that could have been your money, but because, you know, you bought into what we're doing, and that's the really cool part. We have maybe you know, 15, 18 people at HQ, I guess that's what they call it. Uh, I always laugh when I say executive, but getting the buy-in and I think people believe in what we're doing and everybody obviously needs to make some money, support their family. But I think a lot of our staff is saying like, hey, I believe in this weed for the people movement. We're willing to make a little less to do something good. How yeah. long do you think until it becomes federally, federally legal? Federally legal? Yeah. Think, I'll hit a little bit of that. Yeah. I'm not scared. I'm down to the end. <laughs> if I fuck up a few questions, no big deal. <laughs> Shout out to Moda. Yeah. We'll go for the baby bog. <laughs> I, should, I should still be able to survive. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little healthy rip. Uh, yeah. You know, the Fed question is a, is a good fucking question. Those guys are so stupid and so incompetent and so controlled by special interest money, they can't do shit. So, I mean, uh, betting on political people to do what they have a majority of votes to do is an interesting question. You know, I hope the Biden administration... Uh, you know, but honestly, if we're being blunt, Biden is an anti-weed guy just by nature. Kamala Harris is anti-weed uh, VP. And, you know, Schumer, he's pushing it pretty hard. And I think they could get Republicans on board but for whatever optics reason. They're scared of being seen as, you know, too far left or supporting cannabis. So I feel like there's this two-year window at least to get some federal uh, reformation. Or who fucking knows? It could be five years. It could be 10 years. 
I mean, my general opinion, and I like a lot of the politicians out there. They're great. I have some that are sincere. But the people running the government are the dumbest motherfuckers on the planet. And most of them are full-blown narcissists that don't know shit about business. And actually passage stuff that the, that the, that not talking to the ones I like, just to be clear. <laughs> uh, and, and, mo and, 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 and most of them, they don't know. And then half the shit they do, they're leaving out the constituents. You know why Big Oil in Long Beach is... I, I, I'm going to do the research on it and, and see where their contributions are going. But you know why Big Oil pays the least amount of taxes? and Because they fucking make the most campaign contributions. You know why some of that got earmarked for public safety? I like public safety. But at the end of the day, they're one of the biggest uh, forces in any local politics, those unions that have a lot of money that donate to the, to the politicians. So... You know, they don't really do the people's biddings. That's kind of a side uh, thing, but you guys got me a little high. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I would say federal legalization, two years, or we're probably fucked for a good while. So, or not even two years now. It's whatever he's out, you know, or the, the next Senate's going to change, you know, 2022. Or if maybe the Democrats get some more seats. But I don't maybe think. Maybe Trump yeah, comes probably back. Probably a divided too. government, I think. <laughs> he, might, he might come back. <laughs> Well, I, I I think you know my <laughs> it's not it's not impossible, we'll see. but you know I, I don't think it's a Democrat Republican issue, and I even tell our staff too like the issues we're passionate about the community outreach and the social equity stuff like these aren't Democrat Republican issues lowering tax on cannabis lowering barriers of entry decriminalization, so I think almost all of cannabis reform is bipartisan, and when thirty seven fucking states, which you would figure is seventy four senators, have some form of legalization, this should be the easiest fucking layup to hit mm -hmm. in politics. Meanwhile, like, Biden's got some $6 trillion fucking whatever bill that they're never going to agree on, and he's playing a bad game of checkers. Yeah. They're all going in front of the camera for political points because they're just worried about who the fuck's going to run and win in 2022. So, like, <laughs> if they actually did the people's bidding, yeah. they could tee up a bill that would be, like, 70% support, uh, not only in the Senate, but among the population. And, and to be fair to Trump, he did more on de-incarceration de than any Democratic president uh, has really done, at least in the, in, the, in the modern era. But those are bipartisan issues, and they're not tackling them at all. So. They're not going away either. No. Cool. Well, thank you so much for, for coming out and uh, sharing your, your story with us. We really appreciate it. Everyone, make sure you go and follow Elliot on Instagram at uh, catalyst underscore CEO. Follow sure me on bluntly um, underscore Dina. Dot. <laughs> or sorry, dot, if you're right. <laughs> I'm bluntly.ian, and you can follow us on bluntly.us on Instagram. Um, make sure you follow on uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever else you are as well. And uh, again, we really appreciate your time, and, and thank you so much for, for sharing your 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 story with us and, and your experience. I, mean, I really appreciate you guys having me. You know, I think you know we try to just get the message out any way we can, so this is a good... Uh, you know, avenue and venue to try to get people to hear, you know, what we're all about as a brand and a company. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Weed for the people. Yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> Weed for the people. <laughs>